And I told my wife, and she said, well, you've been writing all your life. Why don't you do something with it? Yeah, yeah. And that was kind of the kick in the pants. And, uh, you know, so doing a doing a real estate deal with a fellow that owns a newspaper. And right. I, I, it was a great opportunity. We're sitting on a property. We bought thanks to you. Thank you again, Eddie, for pushing that through. And the great work there at uh, Century 21 Broaders, which we never mention in your columns, since of course you're Eddie at mudpuddlerealestate.com and folks send emails to you, or Eddie at Read the Herald, but you've got your realtor pen on there. And thank you again for this tremendous. We wouldn't be sitting here uh, this morning if it hadn't been for a rendezvousing with you and one of your good looking signs that was down here at the end of North Gate Boulevard, which we finally actually picked up recently. It had been there for uh, quite a while. We've got that, I think, in a good location. But you know, as you think through all the steps that uh, that you have to come up with a great column. Laying out something, as as I ask anyone who approaches about a column, can you lay out a theme for at least 52 weeks? Can you think through that far out? Because if readers fall in love with what you're writing, which I know folks have fallen in love with yours, much like all of our columnists, if they fall in love, they want to see it week after week after week. And are you having trouble coming up with new topic ideas, or are you getting folks sending you emails I'm, for things they want you to cover? I'm getting emails, not all of which are positive. I've been called an idiot. Of course, I was. You, you congratulated oh, me yeah. when I got the oh, you're I an love idiot email. One of them, yeah, that's right, <laughs> that's right. But it just means I, you know, I, I hit a nerve. But so far, it's it's gone pretty good. Yeah, that's, yeah. One thing is that. Um, some of my topics, I've got 400 to 600 words. Right. And there's a lot of topics you cannot do justice to in that short right. period of time. Right. So I'll do a series. Mm-hmm. And I, it may take, like, we're doing a home just right just now. Just last week, you wrapped that up. That's right. And What's that's, out in the newsstands now? Sure. And that, you know, that covered three weeks. And even at that, I kind of gave a short trip, but I covered the highlights, what to look for. Right. Uh, what to look out for. Right. Sometimes it's more important than what to look for. Oh, yeah. So it's, um, I'm having a blast with it, and I folks, appreciate the opportunity. Oh, yeah. Well, if folks haven't seen it, they need to go online to MyrtleBeachHerald.com. This is a, 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 a nice plug for the Herald's website because they can see some of the back copies. They can even go back to one of the early ones, What is Mud Puddle Real Estate, which I think you started rolling even before we did that column because you've probably gotten a lot of questions about that, or that may have been right out of the gate. But Mud Puddle Real Estate, you've had different rules there. Mm-hmm. Rule number one for viewers who haven't been online is? Um, Americans, there's one thing Americans do not do as well as almost the entire world, and that's negotiate. Right. And most people, when they go to list their property, they're concerned about this big negotiation, and they want to price their property high so they can get haggled down. Americans don't haggle. We buy things on sale. We uh, use coupons, you know, we go to Costco and Sam's, we don't haggle. Right. So uh, what happens is generally the property sits there, they get it, the the person that's trying to sell their property, they, they get aggravated, of course the agent will tell them, you know, you're just too high. Right. So finally they'll grudgingly bring the price down a little bit, mm-hmm. fuss at the agent, Right. nothing will happen, they'll bring the price down, fuss harder at the agent. Price will come down a little bit more. Finally, all of a sudden, it's like somebody opens the floodgates, and here's all these people walking through. Yeah. And they get and they get start getting offers, where if they'd have priced it right from the get go, it would have long since been sold. Right. And uh, of course, the in, inverse of that is because a lot of people do that. The buyers, they come in, and I see it day after day. They'll come to me and say, "I want to spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars." Well, if they've, and a lot of times they've already gone on the web themselves, and when they do their little search, they type in $150,000. Right. Well, the person that priced their house at 160 but would take 150 and they price it 160 165 so that they could be haggled down, Right. they never see it. The buyer never sees it because it doesn't come mm. up on their list. Mm. And if they go to an agent and say, I don't want to look at anything over $150,000, the agent types in $150,000 MLS, right. they never see it. Or if they priced it to begin with at 150 because in actuality, at 165, if it's a hundred fifty thousand dollar product, and they're competing with true 165, 165s, right? right. They don't compete. Mm. So you know, you've got to price. You've got to price it right. That's and, a 
That's a very good point. I bet a lot of folks, but a lot of folks probably, they, they must be dream. I mean, they must be imagining that everyone's going to come negotiate with them. Where does that come from? Well, because well, in the movies, right? You know, uh, everybody thinks they're Donald Trump, you know, and Donald Trump, art of the deal, you know, yeah. all the stuff about negotiations. In reality, what normally ends up happening is when they finally get down to what the market says right the property's worth. Right. You know, they get the buyers come, boom, and they do a deal. The whole, you know, and that's that's an American thing. I mean, Americans go on vacation, right? And they'll go to you know somewhere down in the Caribbean. There's a street hawker, four dollars for the trinket. Well, an American gets him down to two dollars and thinks, hey, hey, I showed him, that guy had taken forty five cents. You know, right, he, right. He's thinking that he's policing Americans all day long. Yeah, yeah. And it's, but that's one thing we've lost. I mean, how? I mean, even car dealers really, you know, supposedly there's this big haggling. There's not a whole lot of haggling. Most of it's driven by financing. Right, right. That's a great point. And you've gotten into that even on the real estate side, that a lot of things are driven by financing, how creatively someone can step out there and do some financing. Are there some good opportunities for folks? People who are in trouble um, with distressed properties, creative financing, if you've got somebody who knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. Can, can really save the day. Right. The only caveat to that is is anybody who's in a in a bad situation, first thing you do is you call your bank. Right. You know, people want to really? crawl yeah. they want to crawl in a hole and they want to hide. First thing you do is you call the bank. Mm -hmm. Because you've got a mortgage contract. Mm -hmm. And that mortgage contract spells out what you're supposed to do and what the right. bank's going to do. Right. It also spells out if you don't do what you said you would do, namely make the payments. Right. Its name spells out what the bank's going to do. And the bank's going to do that unless you let them know what the situation is. Yes. Banks do not want houses. Houses are a liability. Mortgages are assets. So they want a performing mortgage. Most of the time, they can work something out. And if the house has to foreclose, at least the process is out in the open. And right. it's not this big green green-headed demon that's going oh, to yeah. tear you up. But... Um, and I kind of specialize a little bit in distressed properties because you work harder for less money, but it's very satisfying to help people through a real Oh, that's got to be because they are. You know, I've seen stories recently about the level of anxiety and stress caused by folks who are facing foreclosure or folks whose homes are in difficult. And I could imagine it easily as a small business owner and, and lots of folks in that position. Just the the pressure that's put on you from having things, and I'm sure uh, lots of folks are faced with that. So I bet that is very gratifying. And, and the thing about it is, once normally once they contact the bank, now you have to get past the collector. The first person you can talk to is going to be a collector, and all he's going to say is, where is the check? Right. You need to get through to the workout department or mm -hmm. loss mitigation department, and you right. may have to call three times. But those are the people that can make changes happen. If it's if you're in an arm that is adjusted outside, sometimes they can just refinance you into a fixed rate right. and fix it. Right. If you're if you lose a job and you fall three four months behind, mm -hmm. well, if you get a new job and suddenly your income's restored, the bank and it varies from bank to bank situation. situation the bank can take those four payments and put them on the end or make it a balloon at the end. Right. Either way, you get back on track. But they can't do that if you don't call. That's a um, great point. And the thing about it is if, you, if you're scared to death of the bank or whatever, a realtor that, that specializes, I do it all the time. I've got a form for it. They give me what's called a letter of authorization, and I make the phone call. Mm. I work, and I negotiate it. That's tremendous. Eh? I mean, but it's, and a lot of times, I mean, as a realtor, yeah, I'm, I would like to get paid, but some of the best times you don't get paid because you work it out. But talk about great advertising. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's great advertising for the bank, too. That is. That is. That is. Even though a lot of bankers don't want to promote the fact that we're going to... I mean, because ultimately, as you said, the collector's got to be saying, where's the check? Mm -hmm. Where's the money? But at the same time, uh, the fact that they are willing and capable of working it out is critical. But they can't unless you make the phone call. Right. right. Or get somebody else to make the phone call. That's, just, that's the great thing. You don't even have to make the phone call yourself. Just get somebody that knows what they're doing. And then, you, like I said, you can get... There are people out there who do it for free. Right. 
Eddie, you've done about 15 or 20. Do you see another 40, 50? Are they, are they in your mind? You've already begun laying oh. a bunch of them out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, uh, realtors are helping me come up with ideas Good. and people on the street, you know, Great. A ask questions. And you know, whenever I'm working with a client, early on, they hear it until they can recite it back to me. My uh, mantra is, the only bad question is when you don't ask. Right. And, and because an educated consumer is less likely to get in trouble okay. and less likely to have hiccups come up at the last second, which right. can kill, kill a deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Eddie, thanks so much for being with us this morning. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Keep up the great work with Mud Puddle Real Estate. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Myrtle Beach Herald columnist Eddie Paul coming up next. How often do we have a guest on the show who loves being called an idiot? Who loves being called an idiot? This was an example. Eddie loved being called an idiot. I was thrilled he was called an idiot because he had covered a muddy topic positively and one of the folks who felt that they were being targeted was not happy and they went after him. Well, he's not targeting anybody. He's targeting subjects. He's targeting muddy topics and he's targeting them well. Take the time to learn more about Mud Puddle Real Estate. Go online at MyrtleBeachHerald.com. He's going to be covering scams. He's going to be covering negotiating. He's going to be covering creative financing. He's already been covering much of this. There's a lot more out there, distressed properties, and a great take on it. Inspector Homes Part 3 is in newsstands until today. There'll be a new one in newsstands tomorrow. Get out there and pick up a printed copy of the Myrtle Beach Herald or go online to MyrtleBeachHerald.com and see our muddy waters of the Mud Puddle Real Estate and its, and its author, Eddie Paul. Thanks again, Eddie, for coming in this morning. Absolutely.